Hi, welcome back. I am so excited to be doing this video today because I finally get to talk about the Auric Glow Lust. This is a product that I've been wanting to try for, I guess, up to two years, a year? I'm, what is time? This is a makeup brand created by the YouTuber Samantha Ravendahl. She's been on YouTube for a very long time. We're rel I, I feel like, I think we're the same age, like 29, 30. Um, but anyways, she's been on YouTube for a really long time and we have like literally identical makeup preferences. She created a brand that would not only be cruelty free, um, but would actually have skincare benefits. And, you know, she just, she wanted to be more inclusive and like just, luxury, you know, it's just everything great. So I really wouldn't expect anything bad from Sam because she seems like a very attentive, very thoughtful person. I picked up the Glow Lust during their Black Friday sale. I told myself I would wait for an actual sale because I did have the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury that I've been trying to use up for like a few years now. Um, actually more than a few years, but don't judge me. Like I didn't need more than one glowy type of primer, highlighter, complexion type product that is very multifaceted. So um, now that I'm almost out of the Hollywood Flawless Filter, I felt justified in picking this up and it's been a long time coming and I, I feel like I'm the last person on earth to like try this and review it and use it. Um, but I used this actually for the first time last night and I was not disappointed. Uh, my skin felt so soft, so nourished. Um, I was so glowy, but not in like a sticky, gooey, or even like metallic looking way. Spoiler alert, I love it. I'm gonna do a regular face of makeup with you guys today and just show you how I use this product and how it performs on my skin. As you see, it's lovely. It's lovely. Let's just get into it. Mm -mm -mm. I picked up the shade Selenite. It's the second to the last shade. Um, these shades are way more pigmented than the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, and they have less mica and they actually have enough skincare ingredients to be considered, um, I don't really know the word, but to actually give you skincare benefits. Moisturizing, very nourishing, and yeah, it's just lovely. It's beautiful glass packaging. I think it's made in Italy. The cap is like non, it's not loose, so it's heavy. It feels luxurious. It feels like you paid what it's worth, you know what I mean? And the pump, I remember specifically when she launched this a couple years ago, she spent a lot of time talking about the pump, and the pump is is like this very wonderful thing <laughs> where you can control how much product comes out. So if you wanna do your full face, like use this as your complexion product or mixed in with like a cream or something like that, um, you can pump out more. Or if you wanna use it as a highlight, uh, you can do like an itty bitty pump to like a full pump and use less or more. It's just genius, it's wonderful. I don't know why more makeup brands don't use that type of pump because I sure do appreciate it. Anyways, so let's get into me applying this and using this and then I'm going to compare it to some similar products and my thoughts on those and yeah. It's snowing today so I brought out the goth muppet sweater too. I'm just going to be doing my makeup in the same way that I would any other normal day which is like in place of the Auric Glow Lust it would be the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And uh, I like to mix that with my base product to kind of give it a, more illumination, more natural glow. Um, but what's so amazing about this is the pump. Like you can control how much comes out. And I just, bravo, bravo. So I'm just gonna take like one pump on my finger. Cap is tight, but I appreciate like, that because that means it's not gonna like fly off or anything so i'm just gonna kind of dab this all over the same way i would the charlotte tilbury product I this this way last night and i have to say that my base looked really really beautiful I'm taking the laura mercier tinted moisturizer i'm in 1w1 porcelain and i like to take that onto two fingers and dab 
all over my face as well. Blend that in with a damp sponge all over the face. And this mixes beautifully. I think this is gonna be a really beautiful product to just wear on its own because it does have a little bit more um, coverage than the Hollywood Flawless Filter and it seems like it has less mica. And since Sam stated that this does have enough skincare ingredients in it to warrant like actual skincare benefits, um, I have, I did notice last night that my base almost seemed to like sink into my face with more ease and well, not sink into my face. It sank into my skin with a little bit more ease than usual more beautifully throughout the night. Um, and yeah, it just, even with this, so the Laura Mercier, this is kind of like a test, the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, I don't find very moisturizing on me. It kind of clings to like any type of dry patches I might have. And so this is kind of the test to see if this helps it be a little more emollient and a little more like kinder to my skin, I guess I should say. Very light coverage, very glowy. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm just gonna do like a quick little look-see here so you guys can see the um, the base without any type of like concealer or blush or contour, etc. on and just like the added glow, especially on the high points but not shimmery, not gooey. Um, there's a little bit of a tack, but it feels like just skincare that has yet to sink into the skin. I do like it to kind of, what would be the word? I do like it to kind of sink into the skin after a while. I do appreciate that in a product and that's what it did last night. So we'll see what it does as I continue my makeup application. Going in with the NARS soft matte concealer just so i can see how this one works with this particular product yesterday i used the kosas and it was just like dewy and lovely and it just looked great but i want to see how something that isn't so emollient and a little bit more matte goes onto the face i'm not going to put on too much concealer but yeah that looks really nice very natural very healthy looking oh man sam you did it i'm gonna take the westman atelier oops um contour stick in biscuit and just blend that in with my sponge to get like a soft chiseled look. I'm not looking for anything crazy today. So everyone's been doing the I'm cold trend, which is just taking like a more cool tone blush like around here. Um, and so I wanted to give it a try. I'm going to be using the Rowan cream blush in the shade Natural Rose. Um, I figured since it was a little dewy and kind of Mm, lightly pigmented, I would say, um, that this would be a good thing to test out because I did use more of a, a more matte cream blush last night and it performed beautifully. So I do want to see how it performs with more dewy formulas. And it doesn't seem to be affecting it. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be affecting it. If anything, I think it enhances it. Um, how do they do it? They just like bring it onto the nose. Like it's, people just like keep like talking about this makeup trend. Like it's like the newest thing ever invented and it's just, you're just making your nose more blushed, like you're cold. I don't know, some, I love like a lot of things that trend on like TikTok and stuff like that, but some of them are kind of like eye rolls. But yeah, that does, the dewiness of the blush didn't seem to disturb my base at all. So I feel like I could almost go in with more. Let's just do it. More is more. 
I never wear my blush in the center of my face. I feel like it makes me look like a child. All right, and here is beige contour blush. I think that looks really pretty. Yeah, and you can see the like elevated glow that's on my cheekbones right now. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, and you know, maybe I didn't go in as hard as I could have with the blush, with the I'm cold look, but that's, it's just not me, man. It's just not me. <laughs> feel a little lazy today. Um, plus this is more of like a skin focused video. So I'm just gonna take the um, Fort de France highlighter and just highlight my inner corner up into my crease here just for a little extra something something a little under my brow bone just to give the eyes a little something and then i'm gonna go in off camera and use the hourglass caution mascara and i'll be right back okay mascara is done and i went ahead and put on the sephora rouge lip lacquer in the shade L25. So that's done. So I'm gonna do a little extra something something here. Um, I'm gonna take like half a pump. Yeah, it's about half a pump. And I'm gonna use this as my highlighter. I know, groundbreaking. I'm gonna use this as my highlighter. So I'm gonna take like half here, half here, Take a little bit more off that side and just blend it out. It blends out in like two seconds. Oh my god. It's so pretty. I just, I'm so happy with this product. Yeah, it just, it feels like, I don't want to say a serum, but it's, it's thicker than the Hollywood Flawless Filter, but it's, it's like if the Hollywood Flawless Filter had a little bit more coverage um, and it just felt like skincare. It feels like makeup, makeup truly meets skincare. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's... Please don't mind how yellow my skin looks. I don't know what is going on. Anyways, look how beautiful. We'll zoom back up. Yeah. So happy with that. Oh, Sam. What did we do to deserve this in all the right ways? Thank you. I feel so healthy looking. <laughs> that my makeup is done, which I'm very happy with. Do some comparison swatches for Glow Lust on my hand here. And a little bit goes a really long way. This stuff is much thicker, as you can see, than the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And next to it, I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. So I'm using the shade Selenite in the Glow Less, the shade Too Fair in the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like they're very similar in shade. The Charlotte Tilbury might be a little lighter actually, but I'm just gonna kind of blend that out a little bit so you can compare the, the glow of it. You can see that selenite is much more dewy and way more pigmented. Like the Hollywood Flawless Filter has this. It I They're just so pretty. I, I'm just kind of in awe with how shiny and just nourishing this feels compared to this. The third product and the second thing that I'm going to be comparing it to is the Iconic London Radiance Booster. This is, I would say that this is similar in texture to the Auric Glow Lust. It's not nourishing the way the Auric Glow Lust feels. It just feels gooey and it, I feel like, okay, so how should I say this? I wear this as a foundation 
mainly, like all, all over complexion product in the summertime. As you can see, this is much more, this is way darker than I am now, but um, in the, the summertime, this shade matches me perfectly. And you can see the shine is comparable saturation and the overall opacity with this product is comparable to the Auric Glow Lust. Um, but the Iconic London does not sink into the skin in a nourishing way, I've noticed. It remains tacky. It, it can feel kind of heavy on the face. Um, and this is in the shade Sand Glow, so that's what I do in the summer. This is the first thing I put on my hand, and you just see how emollient looking that's remained. And when I touch it, it feels like it's sinking into my hand like a, like a cream, almost. And the Charlotte Tilbury, it's still a little tacky. The Tilbury has settled a lot more. It's still a little tacky, but you can tell that it's significantly less wet than the Auric Glow Lust. And then even these two are significantly less wet and tacky than the Iconic London. Like this does not dry down at all. Like I could swatch this, like show you how it shears out because that is kind of like a pigmented swatch. So you can't, it is like, malleable you see it's way too dark for me now even when i share it out but it is very it's a very beautiful product but it doesn't give the same like skincare feel that the auric glow lust gives and even when i blend this out it remains pigmented it remains shiny i'm gonna blend out the charlotte tilbury and you see it kind of stays in the same place. But yeah, if you have one, you don't necessarily need another. You definitely don't need all three, but I use this one in the summer. My Charlotte Tilbury is almost out and I just picked up the Auric Glow Lust. So soon I will just be using the Auric Glow Lust, but all three are beautiful products. I do prefer these two more but the Iconic London is a very nice product as well. Okay, so that is it. That is me finally trying this product that I've been wanting since Sam launched it. And I am really, really happy with the Auric Glow Lust. I think that it looks so natural, so nourishing, so beautiful. My skin feels healthy and soft. Um, like when I took my makeup off last night, it felt really, really soft. It didn't feel like I was wearing a heavy emollient product on it all day. Um, and that's just what I'm going for nowadays. I just want to look soft and glowy and healthy. And yeah, she really, she got my thumbs up for this and I'm so happy I picked it up. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and bye.